Ethics is now the highest sealed topic for the USMLE. It now constitutes a majority of the Step 2 CK exam, and according to the USMLE, 10 to 15 percent of your exam will be ethics questions. So I strongly recommend that you watch this high yield ethics review until the end. Minors are patients less than 18 years old. They require parental consent for medical treatment. But like with everything in the USMLE, examiners love to test the exceptions. So we will focus on the high yield circumstances where parental consent is not required and minors can consent to their own medical care. Minors may be considered emancipated via two pathways, medical emancipation or legal emancipation. We will look at medical emancipation first since this is what confuses a lot of people the most. So now we're going to break down the circumstances of medical emancipation and then I'll give you an extremely high yield and easy mnemonic so you'll never forget. So in most states, a minor does not need parental consent to receive mental health or substance abuse treatment. And just so you know, I'll be mentioning states a lot because the law differs by each state. Now let's move on to the second circumstance of medical emancipation, and that is a medical emergency. That's a situation where medical care is needed to prevent a loss of life or even loss of limbs. So in a medical emergency, we will not delay care to gain consent. Our first priority is to save that patient's life. In most states, if a minor comes to you seeking contraception such as birth control, parental consent is not required. Minors also do not require parental consent for the treatment of STIs, this also encourages minors to seek treatment without the concern of parental involvement. Okay, so when it comes to being pregnant and receiving care during pregnancy, parental consent is not required. So if a parent comes to you demanding to know if their child is pregnant or has an STI, you have a duty to protect the patient's privacy, whether they are a minor or not. Now let's get into the epic mnemonic for remembering medically emancipated minors. And that is medic. We can remember medical emancipation with the mnemonic medic. M, mental health. E, emergency. D, diaphragm, such as the type of contraception. And I, STI, as well as C, conception or pregnancy and be sure to power up that like button for the medic mnemonic now we are going to discuss legal emancipation and i will show you another easy mnemonic and end this video with high yield questions to review everything that we've learned so a minor is considered legally independent when they earn their own money and are able to financially support themselves. So in this case, this minor would be legally emancipated. Active military service also constitutes legal emancipation. And also if they live alone, that kind of falls under the same umbrella of being financially independent as we previously discussed and being married. In some states, high school graduates are also considered legally emancipated. Parents are also legally emancipated. So if a minor is 16 years old and they have a child, they are legally emancipated. Now we can move on to mnemonic number two. To remember legal emancipation, we can use the first four letters of emancipation, Iman. E, earners, minors who are financially independent. M, military, those who are in active military service. A, alone, they live alone. 
and N nuptials. They are married. And here I have this diagram so that you can remember that parents are also legally emancipated. So before we move on to the practice questions, be sure to power up the like button. It lets me know what type of content you like and if I should produce even more. Okay, now let's get into the questions. A 16-year-old female presents with a five-day history of vaginal discharge. She admits to being sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently. Her urine gonorrhea test is positive. She starts to cry and asks you to not tell her parents. What is the best response? A. You can receive treatment, but I will have to notify your parents because you are a minor. B. I will not tell your parents, but you will have to tell them yourself now. C. I will not tell your parents because you do not need parental consent to receive treatment of STIs. D. I will not tell them that you are sexually active, but you need their consent to receive treatment for gonorrhea. And the answer here is option C. I will not tell your parents because you do not need parental consent to receive treatment of STIs. Remember, in the medic mnemonic for medical emancipation, the I stands for STIs. So in this circumstance, a minor does not require parental consent. So you don't need to tell their parents about their sexual activity or that they have an STI. I just want to point out some things about these options. So option B, you definitely don't want to ever say something like that because it's quite pressuring for the patient and not very nice. So oftentimes when doing practice questions or on the actual exam, you can see some responses that are quite harsh. So you can just rule that out. The main thing when answering an ethics question is to be as nice and respectful and non-confrontational as possible while still being truthful and honest. Now let's move on to question two. And this time I'll give you some time to answer on your own since I did not do that for the previous question, okay? So a 17 year old female presents because she had a positive home pregnancy test and would like to repeat the pregnancy test at the doctor's office to confirm its validity. Her mother is aware of the test results and is with her during the visit. The urine pregnancy test comes back positive. Her mom then demands that she terminates the pregnancy. However, the patient would like to continue with the pregnancy. What is the best action? A. Tell the mom that if she gets the consent of the patient's father, then the pregnancy can be terminated. B. Reassure the patient that without the consent of the child's father, the pregnancy cannot be terminated. C. Tell the patient that she has to do the abortion because she is not married and not financially independent. D. Tell the patient that parental consent is not required for continued pregnancy care and an abortion cannot be done if she does not consent to it. So this is me giving you time to answer, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. So the answer here is option D. So that was quite an obvious answer. But I want to point out something here with option C. Like I previously said, this is just a rude response. And secondly, I wanted to highlight that if a patient is pregnant, married or not, they do not need their parents' consent. Also, the same goes for whether or not they're financially independent. So what I'm trying to say is that all of these things don't need to coexist at once. If the patient has just one of them, they don't need parental consent. So if they have an STI, they don't need parental consent. If they are married, they don't need parental consent. If they are a parent themselves, they don't need parental consent. And now let's summarize everything that we have covered with the mnemonics, Eman and Medic. 
So minors can be considered emancipated using either legal emancipation or medical emancipation. For legal emancipation, this can be remembered with the mnemonic Iman. That's basically the first four letters of emancipated. E, earners, patients who are financially independent. M, military, for those in active duty. A, alone, they live alone. N, nuptials, they are married. Other considerations as well are those patients that are parents themselves or they are high school graduates. So for those circumstances, patients do not require parental consent to seek medical attention. Minors are medically emancipated if M, they're seeking mental health treatment or treatment for substance abuse. E, it's a medical emergency. D, diaphragm, so you can remember contraception, and I, STIs, and C, conception. So I truly hope that the mnemonics and practice questions were helpful for you to remember this topic. If you like this content, please be sure to power up that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. And to continue learning more, click this video right here. Okay, thank you.